So I have a bit of a cold today <coughs> and you can probably hear my voice is a bit weird. I won't apologize for that, but I'm not letting no cold stop me from making a video. So let's get started. Horrible cold voice video begin now. Okay, so this is my engine block and I will be rebuilding this engine block and this block has a lot of miles on it. And as you can see, the cylinder bores aren't damaged in any way, but the cross hatch pattern from the honing process is definitely gone. And to restore this block properly to give it good ring seal and good compression, of course, we will need to overbore the cylinder block. And of course, we will need to fit oversized pistons in it. These are the pistons that I'll be using, and these are Toyota supercharged for a GZE engine pistons. They're also called semi-forged pistons, and I do have a video explaining what semi-forged actually means. Here are some piston specs, and here's also the part number in case you're interested. These are 0.5 millimeters oversized, and of course, to fit them, we will need to, as I already said, overbore the cylinder block. So no big deal, we take the pistons and the cylinder block to a machine shop, we tell them my desired piston to wall clearance, and we tell them to bore and hone the block. So pretty simple, right? Of course we can do that, but there's a bit of an issue here. Now the block, when it's bored and honed, it's going to be bored and honed in this state, as a bare block, without anything attached to it. But of course, to run, to operate, to have combustion occur, the cylinder block needs to have the cylinder head, the head gasket, and a bunch of other stuff bolted down and torqued down onto the block. So what happens when you bolt down and torque down the cylinder head onto the block? The block actually becomes subject to some very high forces and loads that are a consequence of the clamping forces exerted onto the block as you torque down the cylinder head. And what these forces can do is that they can distort the shape of your bores. Despite the block being a very rigid item, these forces are so high that they can distort the shape of your bores, because the bores at the end of the day are simply a hollow cylindrical shape. So to bore and hone the block in its distorted shape would mean that we need to bore and hone it with a cylinder head installed. Of course, this is impossible because, as we know, once you install a head onto a block, a boring and a honing machine does not have access to the bores. So, so how do we solve this issue? Of course, we solve it by using a torque plate. And this is what a typical torque plate looks like. And it essentially mimics a cylinder head. It mimics the forces that occur in the block when you bolt down a cylinder head to it. Of course, a torque plate has holes in it that match the size and position of the boards in your actual block. It also has holes for head bolts, which again, of course, match the holes in your block. So you install this thing on top of your block, you torque it down, and only then do you bore and hone the block. What this means is that you're boring and honing the block in its distorted shape, because the torque plate is mimicking the distortions caused by a cylinder head being installed onto the block. And this means that you're boring and honing in the same shape in which the block will be running. And the result is usually better ring seal, better compression, and possibly even reduced oil consumption. But there's a bit of an issue here. Torque plates are kinda expensive. Now you might get lucky and the machine shop that does your engine will have a torque plate for your engine and you're good to go. But if your machine shop doesn't have a torque plate for your engine, you have one of two options. Option one is to buy a ready-made torque plate, which as you can see is kinda expensive. Option two is to have a torque plate custom made for your engine, which is usually even more expensive. So when deciding on my engine build, I faced the same dilemma. And then I realized, why not simulate a cylinder head with an actual cylinder head? And in the end, that's exactly what I decided to do. I took my old junk 4AGE cylinder head and took it to a machine shop and told them to drill holes straight through the head. The center of the hole is of course the center of the spark plug hole because the spark plug is centrally located uh, in the combustion chamber and therefore in the bore of the 4AGE cylinder head. I told the machine shop to drill these holes in a diameter of 83.5 millimeters. My actual final bore diameter will be 81 and a half millimeters but I told them to drill them a bit larger just in case that the spark plug hole isn't perfectly centered in the bore. Now these holes do not need to be perfect or perfectly accurate or whatever, because the only goal of the holes is to give the boring and honing machines access to your actual cylinder block bores. 
The end result is this funny looking thing you can see before you. And although it looks kind of funny, I have reasons to believe that this in theory should be even better than a conventional torque plate. The added bonus is that it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper because you're using an old, you know, junk head like mine that had irreparable damage, which would otherwise end up in the scrap heap. Now, heads like this are still plentiful and can be found for most popular uh, engine platforms. In case of the 4 AGE, an old head is usually between 50 to 100 bucks. Chances are, if you've been working long enough with your engine platform of choice, you probably have one or even more heads laying around that you do not know what to do with them. If you don't, chances are you know a fellow enthusiast who has some junk heads and who might be willing to give it to you for free because you're going to make a torque plate and then he or his or her friends can use a torque plate when they overbore and hone their engine. So it's recycling at its finest. The only other cost is the cost of the machining or the drilling of the head. Depending on where you live, what kind of head uh, you're drilling through and what kind of machine shop does the work, the cost will vary, of course. And you can expect to pay anywhere between, I don't know, 75 to maybe 150 or maybe even $200 for an inline six cylinder head, for example, because this is a time consuming job. Usually some plugs need to be removed from the cylinder head and these holes are pretty big. So it does take some time to have them drilled through the head. So the total cost of making a torque plate like this will be anywhere between, I don't know, 75 to maybe 200, 250 bucks, maybe a bit more. But even if you pay, you know, 250, this is still going to be a lot less than the typical cost of a, you know, ready-made torque plate, which is usually between 400 to 750 dollars for a ready-made torque plate for an inline four cylinder engine, for example. So you're definitely saving a lot of money. Also, this should be a better torque plate because it's not some random solid piece of metal. It's an actual head. As such, it's made from the same material that the actual head is made from that you will be installing on the uh, cylinder block. And it also has the same internal, you know, wall matrix structure as an actual head because this used to be an actual head at some point. So it should better mimic a head because it is an actual head. Yeah, I said that too many times. So this is the, the essential idea of today's video. Recycle or even upcycle old junk, give it a new higher purpose while saving money and improving your engine built in the process. Now, before we end this video, there's some important notes we must go through when it comes to using this thing as a torque plate and using torque plates in general. When you're using a torque plate, make sure to use it together with a head gasket the same type and brand of head gasket that you will be using in your final engine assembly. Also make sure to use the same head bolts or head studs that you will be using in your final engine assembly. This is important because both the head gasket and the head studs or bolts play an important part in the overall clamping forces and the way your cylinder block gets distorted. Now when it comes to multi-layered steel head gaskets or MLS head gaskets, you can use the same MLS head gasket that you use for the torque plate and in your final engine assembly. You can reuse MLS head gaskets as long as you do not heat cycle them. So you can, so if you install a MLS head gasket and your engine runs and gets to operating temperature, you should not reuse this MLS head gasket. Many people do it and they have zero negative consequences, but you are increasing the chances of a head gasket related failure in such a scenario. Also, the cylinder head you're using as a torque plate should be in reasonably good shape. If it's in really bad shape, it's a good idea to have it decked again, so to make sure it's perfectly straight, because like this, it will properly mimic an actual cylinder head. If it's really bent or out of shape, then it's not a good idea to use it as a torque plate, of course. Also, make sure that you're boring and honing your cylinder block with your main caps or a main cap girdle or an additional girdle over the main caps installed onto the block. This is important because main caps and girdles can also distort the block in a very similar fashion to how a cylinder head distorts a block. So do you need to do this? Do you need a torque plate when you're rebuilding your engine? Uh, the short answer is no, you definitely do not need a torque plate because after all, when they're first made in the factory, engine blocks are bored and honed without any torque plates. I'm building a Toyota 4AFE engine uh, and my goal is 300 horsepower and many people have built 4A engines to 500 or even more horsepower without using torque plates. That being said, this cannot do any harm. It can only improve things. And even if the benefits are marginal, they are still benefits. 
Do you need to do this if you're doing it on an open deck block? Because in theory, an open deck block should see less distortion because less of the cylinder bore is connected to the rest of the block. In an open deck block, typically only the bottom is connected to the block and the rest is freestanding. While in a closed deck block, both the top and the bottom and even some other parts of the bore can be connected directly to the rest of the block matrix. So a closed deck block should see more distortion when the head is bolted down because more of the distortion of the block is transferred onto the bores. So all that being said, still many people also use torque plates even on open deck blocks because again as we said a benefit no matter how marginal is still a benefit and when you're building a high performance engine all of these little benefits add up. So that's pretty much it when it comes to this little DIY torque plate video. I hope you found this useful and interesting and I hope it helps someone out there improve their engine build and also save some money in the process. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel. Also, Happy New Year! Let's hope 2021 is better than the last one.